Oh, you know, when I think of Mid-Atlantic, it means something more to me than being here in Washington. <laughs> I feel like I should be rocking back and forth. Okay, I'm gonna go pretty quick. I just got a few things I want you to think about. Planet Earth, we need to understand it. I think we all believe that that's true these days with things happening with the environment and humanity. But you know, it, it's still unexplored. And how are you gonna under manage something that you can't understand? You can't understand it if you haven't explored it. We don't even know what's out there. Why? Most of it's underwater, and it's about two miles deep, average depth of the ocean. So that's a lot of water to get, to get uh, through, to be, just to even find out what's out there under the sea. Um, and then w there's this attitude, <laughs> and you're, you're probably, many of you probably have the same attitude sitting there. <laughs> I don't know why I don't care about the bottom of the ocean, but I don't. That's from the mid-70s. I'll tell you why now. Floods, hurricanes, droughts, tsunamis, um, climate change, uh, all those things. And s more simply put, it's the air we breathe. About every other breath of air you take, 50% of the oxygen comes out of the sea. It's the food you eat. Um, billions of people rely on seafood, food from the ocean, another food from the ocean, plus there's the climate effects on food production. It's the water you drink. About 98% of the rainfall on the planet comes out of the ocean. So the answer to that question is you better start caring about the ocean. And you know, when this happened, <laughs> Deepwater Horizon, we, we all got very interested in what's going on at the ocean, and, and this was a mile deep. Okay, so it was only half down to the average of the ocean, greatest depths about seven. And uh, here we had, uh, uh, I show it here as the kraken, the mythical kraken pulling ships down, but there was a monster loose at the bottom of the Gulf of, of Mexico. And you know, the fact that we can drive a robot around Mars, or we can, we can collect dust from the tail of a comet, and we couldn't plug a leak in our own backyard, it shows you what our attitude is about the sea. We take it for granted. So I want to show you a couple things. Well, I just want to show you this for starters. So you see the water there in the foreground. Some ripples in it. There's a little cliff on the right. There's a beach there in the back if you can make it out. Uh, so that's a nice little pool of water. It's the beginning of a pond. That's at the bottom of the Gulf of, of Mexico. So at the bottom of the ocean, we find lakes. And uh, so that, in other words, you're sitting in a submarine looking out the window of the sub at water at the bottom of the sea, super salty water. When you look at the whole world, you know, we find the greatest mountain range, we find the highest mountain peaks, we find the thousands of valleys that are wider and deeper than the Grand Canyon, we find underwater rivers, underwater waterfalls, uh, all those things at the bottom of the sea, just in that few percent. Oh, we also find more life in the darkness of the deep sea than the tropical rainforests, all in that few percent that we have explored. I, yes, I just came back from an expedition to Titanic, and the thing about Titanic is that when it sank, we said we committed the ship and the souls for eternity to the deep. This is the bow of Titanic coming up close to the bow, and uh, that's where Jack was king of the world right there sitting at the bow. Um, so we, we called this eternity. You know, we committed the souls and the ship to eternity, and now here we are, we cross that boundary. So in one sense, we go there with a lot of respect for this thing called eternity. It is a gravesite in many ways. In another sense, you know, it says something about our technology and, and, and our labeling of things, our very emotional way about, uh, about the way we look at things at the bottom of the sea. Um, this is where we're going with that. Instead of just pretty pictures and video, we're starting to build, uh, this is from 1986, we're starting to build a virtual Titanic. So we've collected the data, now we're starting to construct this world based on the real data. That's done by Ken Marshall, an artist. But we want to see the real thing, so when you want to explore Titanic, it's not just looking, uh, looking over Dave Gallo or Bob Ballard or Jim Cameron's shoulders, it's, it's actually doing it on your own. Uh, the planet, home sweet home, seven billion plus people going up to nine billion. You know, we do need to figure out what's at the bottom of the sea or we're gonna make the same mistakes that were made on Titanic. Let's go faster, faster, faster. Let's believe in technology will get us there and that we're unsinkable, okay? Every time an unsinkable ship goes out on the maiden voyage, almost every single time, it goes down to the bottom. I'll show you one more thing. I, I call this a water planet. And you're gonna hear about this in the next talk too. We, we wanted to figure out how much water there really was on Earth. That's the Earth on the left. We'd stripped all the water away. So if the Earth is the size of a basketball, you take all the water off the Earth, it fits into a ping pong ball. There's, um, there's very little water on the planet, okay? It looks like a lot because it's a very thin coating. Um, but on the right side of that, so that ball right there, the big ball, big blue ball, that's all the water on the Earth. That little speck to the right of that, that's all the fresh water. 
That's what we need to uh, survive. So in closing, what I want to tell you is that, remember those things when you think of ocean, uh, the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, all tie right into the sea. And the other thing is a quote by Marcel Proust, it's that the true voyage of exploration or discovery is not so much in seeking new landscapes, it's in having new eyes, and it's looking at this planet that we've taken for granted and starting to think about it differently. Thanks very much.